Hello and uh, welcome to Naked Truth. Um, I have spoken about the topic I'm going to speak about today before, and that is first fruits. <laughs> the collection of first fruit offerings by churches, especially uh, Pentecostal churches, and especially in Africa and in the black churches of America. Now pastors demand first fruits um, as one of the ways to have regular income <laughs> from members of their church. And they tell them to bring to God i.e. to the church, <laughs> uh, their first salaries for the first month of every year. Some even say they should bring salaries of first fruit every month. I don't know how that is supposed to work. Uh, and they make different nonsensical false claims about the rationale for this collection. The most popular is that if you give your first fruits, uh, then you put God first in your life, in your business, in your career, in your job. And that makes you, the giver, prosperous in your endeavors, be it work, business, whatever you do. And it makes you obedient to the instructions of God. And that makes you a candidate for heaven as well. They also say, by giving the first fruits, you bring increase into your life. Increase in finances, increase in blessings, increase in opportunities, increase in whatever that you do. Now, all these are false, and I'm going to give you today probably the most comprehensive and the best uh, um, explanation of this topic you will ever get. So let's speak the naked truth about first fruit offerings. Right. Now, the first place, obviously, to start this discussion is in the law of Moses, where this first fruit offering was prescribed. Now, in Hebrew, they call it the Bikurim, Bikurim, and that is the offering of first fruits. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 1 to 3. Deuteronomy 26, 1 to 3. This is where the law was laid out. <laughs> Please pay attention here. And I'm quoting now. When you have entered the land, Yahweh your God has given you, the Lord your God has given you, and that Lord is Yahweh, as an inheritance, and have taken possession of it and settled in it. Take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil of the land that the Lord your God is giving you and put them in a basket. Then go to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name and present the offering to the priest in charge. <laughs> if you enter the, when you enter the land I am giving to you and you settle in it and that land is the land of Israel or land of Palestine or land of Canaan 
Now, take some of the first fruits of that land of Palestine, of Canaan, of Israel. Put them in a basket and then take them to the place I put my name as my dwelling, i.e. the temple in Jerusalem, and then present the offering to the priest in that place. Now, let's go quickly to Jewish Encyclopedia, where it says that the quantity or the amount of the first fruits to be brought into the temple was voluntary. No amount was mentioned, no specific indication of fruits, because it says, take some of the first fruits. But the rabbis, it says, afterwards decided that it should amount to one sixtieth of the whole crop. One over sixty. <laughs> Not the entire crop, one over sixty should be given as first fruits. Now, this first fruit offering is related, is akin to the law of Moses, the law of the ancient Israelites, where Yahweh told them that the firstborn of every animal and every human belonged to Yahweh. So, first animals, first human beings, first fruits all belong to Yahweh. You can go to Exodus chapter 13, uh, read from verse 2 all the way to verse 12, Exodus 22 from 29 to 30. Right. So, and it's not enough just to take the first fruit in a basket and go to the temple. There are ceremonies, there's a ritual that follows it. And this ritual is contained in Deuteronomy 26, 4 to 10. In that, uh, in those passages, it says that when the person bringing the first fruit has arrived in the temple in Jerusalem and presented the basket of fruits to the priest in charge in the temple in the temple the priest will take that basket of fruits from that person and shall place it in front of the altar yeah okay and then the person that brought it the offerer would make a very critical declaration which goes to the heart of the offering or the sacrifice. Now listen to this. So the person bringing the first fruit will say, in front of the altar, in front of the priest, and I quote, this is Deuteronomy 26, 4 to 10. My father was a wanderer, a wandering Aramean, and he went down into Egypt with a few people and lived there and became a great nation, powerful and numerous. But the Egyptians mistreated us and made us suffer, subjecting us to harsh labor. Then we cried out to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our misery, toil, and operation. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with great terror and with signs and wonders. He brought us to this place and gave us this land. 
a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, the Lord, have given to me. This is a declaration showing why they make the first fruit offering. Because they were given, according to them, that land by their God. And therefore, the first fruit from that land given to them, they will bring as an offering to thank that God that gave them that land. Then, the person making the offering will bow down before the altar. And then the priest would wave the offering, the basket, the sheaf of fruits before the Lord on the day after the Sabbath. You can look at this one in Leviticus 23 verse 11. And then <laughs> A burnt offering of a year old lamb and a grain offering of fine flour, olive oil, and wine must also be made. Leviticus 23 12 to 13. So the person bringing the first fruit will bring it to the altar, present it to the priest. The priest will place it down in front of the altar and the person makes a declaration affirming the reason for bringing that first fruit. And um, the priest will wave it, the fruit, and after waving, a burnt offering of a lamb <laughs> not more than a year old without blemish and also a grain offering of fine flour olive oil and wine must also be made by the person and the priest so it is very clear that the offering of first fruits <laughs> and the law accompanying it and the sacrifices and the rituals applied should apply was meant to apply only to the Israelites whilst they were in the so-called promised land and the fruits of the offering, the first fruits, must come from that promised land. <laughs> Deuteronomy 26, 1 to 3. Let me repeat that. When you have entered the land, the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, and have taken possession of it and settled in it. Take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil of that land the Lord, the Lord your God is giving you and put them in a basket and take to the priest and so on and so forth. Check also Leviticus 23, 9 to 11 for a reaffirmation of this. In fact, according to a Jewish source, this, I, think, I took this from uh, Jewish Virtual Library. Excuse me, and I'll give the link at the end. It says, according to rabbinic interpretation, the duty of bringing first fruits was confined to the seven districts sorry, seven distinct species growing in Erez Israel, i.e. in the land of Israel. 
i.e. wheat, barley, grapes, figs, pomegranates, olive oil, and dates. These are the, the fruit crops that grow in that area. And according to practice of rabbis and the Jewish people, only this were the fruit subject to first fruit offering. From the law of Moses and from the prescriptions on first fruits, it's also clear that the first fruit will be taken to only one place. <laughs> only one place. And that is the temple in Jerusalem. The temple in Jerusalem. Deuteronomy 26, 2-4 says, You shall take some of the first fruits of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God is giving you. And you shall put it in a basket and you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name dwell there. And you shall go to the priest in that place. So that place, the Lord God of Israel chose to put his name as a dwelling place was of course no other place than the temple in Jerusalem. No other place. Jewish Encyclopedia says after the destruction of the temple Bikurim could not be offered <laughs> because the temple is no more and once the temple was gone the Jewish people to whom this law was given stopped doing Bikurim of first fruits <laughs> but the rabbis the rabbis regarded acts of philanthropy as a proper substitute. So no more false fruit. Don't bring anything like that because there's no more temple, but you could do charitable work, charitable giving, philanthropy. Let me give you one more Jewish source on this matter, my myjewishlearning.com. <laughs> It says, we are not in a position to rectify the situation through the bringing of Bikurim since the holy temple to our sorrow is no longer standing. The temple, as the bridge between the physical and spiritual worlds, was the center of a proper Jewish culture rooted in the land of Israel. Without it, without the temple, our ability to reconstruct such a culture as first fruit is limited. It is also very clear from the instructions in the Bible that the first fruits were to be given only to one group of people and only then we are supposed to consume it <laughs> with those they choose to give of course and this group of people or class of people are the priests the priests of Yahweh <laughs> Deuteronomy 18 Verse 3. Deuteronomy 18, verse 3. You are to give to them, the priests, the first fruits of your grain, new wine and olive oil, and the first wool from the shearing of your sheep. <laughs> For the Lord your God has chosen them and their descendants out of all your tribes to stand and minister 
in his name. Only the priests and their descendants will take the first fruits of anything brought here yeah, to the temple. And of course, only them officiated in the temple in Jerusalem. Nobody else. You may also see other uh, passages in the Bible for this. Numbers uh, chapter 18, verses 12 to 13, Ezekiel 44, verse 30. No other person in Israel <laughs> was allowed to eat the fruits or the first fruits. No other person. And let me take you again to Jewish source. Jewishvirtuallibrary.org says, The Israelites uh, An Israelite was strictly forbidden to eat the first fruits. <laughs> Israelites we are forbidden to eat it. If they consume it by mistake or in error, then they must pay a penalty equivalent to a fifth in value of what they consume. So they have to add another fifth value to the value of the thing they consume. So the first fruit they consume plus a fifth of its value as penalty. So they must return what they consumed and pay penalty of one fifth as well. Now, this first fruit offering is not an isolated edict for the Jewish people or the ancient Israelites. It's only one of many feasts and festivals their God decreed they should observe. Other festivals which they must observe include the Sabbath, the Passover, the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, the Festival of Weeks, the Festival of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Festival of Feast of Tabernacles. <laughs> all these have specific times and they are all linked together. Yeah? Now, the church. And all these guys making noise, you know, shouting, bring the first fruits for abundance for this and for blessings and for increase. They've all said that these edicts in Old Testament <laughs> or in Hebrew Bible or in Law of Moses have become obsolete and not binding on Christians. That nobody should observe these laws or have to observe these laws because in the New Testament blessings, favor, increase, promotion, abundance, wealth, everything depends now on faith in Jesus Christ and His grace. They say not by the works of their hand or by their righteousness that they will be blessed, but they will be blessed only by faith and through the grace of Christ. Galatians 3 and Hebrews 9, 14 are some of the places you will see this. But the whole tenor of the New Testament is that it's a New Testament, New Covenant, the Old Covenant of rituals, sacrifices, offerings, false fruits, tithes, are gone. And now there's a new dispensation based on grace and faith in Christ. As a matter of fact, the New Testament describes Jesus Christ as the first fruit of those who believe. Yeah? And being the first fruit, since he offered himself, 
his life as a sacrifice. He's completed all the sacrifices, including the offering of first fruits. He was the, he's supposed to be the first fruit of believers. And therefore, no more first fruit offerings were supposed to be required. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 20 to 23. Jesus Christ was described as the first fruit for believers. So, <laughs> all the churches, all the pastors shouting, making noise, claiming they speak to God, speak to Christ, and speak to Jesus, blah, 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 say, bring to the Lord, they are lying to you. That are <laughs> There's no biblical basis or cultural basis for the collection of first fruits, just as there is none for the collection of tithes. I've made videos on tithes as well. You can go back and look at those. No basis whatsoever. And they know there is no promised land <laughs> outside Palestine or outside the land of Canaan or outside where the ancient Israelites lived. There's no temple in <laughs> churches, and every, every person gets a call, builds a church. These are not the temple of Yahweh. Even in Israel, only one temple, not thousands. <laughs> There's no temple of Jerusalem uh, outside Jerusalem. In fact, the Jerusalem temple is not even there anymore, and for that reason. The Jewish people who own this law and practice do not anymore do the first fruit because they can't take it to any temple. Pastors and churches are not priests of Yahweh. <laughs> they are not Levites. They are not of the tribe of um, Levi. They were not consecrated to be priests of Yahweh. These guys are imposters, and therefore they, they, they cannot claim to collect the first fruit for Yahweh. They are not even Yahweh's priests in the first place. Christianity is not Judaism. I've made this point earlier in other videos as well. Moreover, only first fruits coming from trees that grow in the land of Israel or in the land of Canaan, we are supposed to be subject to the offering of first fruit. Not any other fruit anywhere. Not money. Not salary. Not pension. Not benefits. Not money. Unless, of course, if you make the money from the trees growing in Israel, probably you could take some of it. But So it has to be related, it has to be linked to that so-called promised land. A final point. This law of first fruit, just like all the other festivals, whether it is Sabbath, or Tabernacles, or Feast of Trumpets, or Feast of Weeks, or Day of Atonement, all these were applicable only to the people of Israel. Because that Yahweh that gave them this law is their God only, not the God of other peoples. Again, I made this point in other videos. And that's why he said, I brought you from that land of Egypt. From that place, from their God. And I'm bringing you here to come and worship me as your own God. And you, my own people. The law is not made for Nigeria, or for Ghana, or for Senegal, or for Ivory Coast, or for South Africa, or for anywhere else apart from the land of Israel and the people of Israel. And I can guarantee you 
that the pastors who collect this money they know exactly what they are doing they know what I'm telling you now is true but of course they need the money and therefore they hide under different strategies and strategy games to collect money and confuse the people I don't want to call them fraudsters or scammers but if they know the truth and do something else and obtain money by false claims and false pretenses they know exactly what they are and what they are doing otherwise why do they not observe all the other edicts in the old testament all the laws of moses in the old testament all the rules all the edicts they don't keep any of them apart from those that concern the collection of money tithes offering and things like that that should tell you its own story